Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my weekly Hangouts. I am very pleased tonight to uh, be welcoming a woman who is a living legend for Latinos in this country. She is a really dear friend. She is a mentor and, and a friend to so many people who, whom she inspires every day. You may know her as the co-founder of the Farm Workers, um, the Farm Workers Union, along with Cesar Chavez. But the reality is that she is a, a legend in her own right. The woman has been working incessantly for the past six decades to advocate for Latinos in the United States. I'm talking, of course, about the one and only Dolores Huerta. Dolores, welcome to the Hangout. Oh, hi, everybody. It's uh, nice to be talking to you on this nice, uh, beautiful summer day. Wonderful. <laughs> and nice and I'm, I'm especially pleased to have you here because we are about to celebrate your birthday next week. And so, uh, happy birthday, happy related birthday. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be alive. As everybody knows, I'm now 84 years old, and I'm glad uh, to be with my really good friends in Washington, D.C. And we're going to have a nice fiesta and a nice party, and we hope that everybody can come and join us because it's going to be a lot, lots and lots of fun. We have a very beautiful venue. Uh, where it's going to be held at, and there's going to be a lot of great music and a lot of great food, and so uh, no, no se la pierdan. Don't lose out on this one. It's going to be a really good party. Yeah, we're very excited about that. And if you want to find more information about the party, you can see the link underneath my name on the screen right there. So go to that link, and you're going to find all of the information on how to to um, also support Dolores. She's been working so hard for so many years, and and her foundation needs our help. Now we got, we got to show her that we got her back, too, like she always does for us. So Dolores, I know that I have you for a limited time, so I'm going to, I have so many questions that have been pouring in from everyone online. And so let, I want to start the conversation from the very beginning. What were your primary sources of inspiration? What, what inspired you to fight for social justice so, for so long? Well, uh, I think I've, I've always kind of uh, I've been that way, the way I was raised, you know. My mother was a very engaged in the community. My dad, all of my parents were divorced, and my mother raised us. My dad had a history of always uh, organizing. He was a volunteer organizer for the Mine Workers Union. He was in the State Assembly of New Mexico. And everywhere he went, he always worked for working people. And my mother, too. My mother was in this strike for the cannery workers way back in the day. And she, uh, you know, uh, she was a businesswoman. She always was very charitable and always helping the community and always helping the community uh, organize itself. And then, of course, when my uh, great teacher, uh, mentor, Fred Ross Sr., who was the person that really got me into organizing, and that's where I met Cesar Chavez. And, I uh, became an, an addicted organizer to, uh, hasta la fecha to this day, you know. That's what I call oh my myself, God. an addicted organizer. Yeah, there's, there's so many ways, you, you say addicted, but there's so many ways to describe you. I, I mean, you, you have done so much. People uh, describe you as courageous, as a feminist, as an activist, as a defensora de los Latinos, right? But how would you describe yourself? Uh, again, as an organizer, you know, I, I think I'm very blessed because I've been able to learn a lot from so many people and the work that I've, uh, I've done over the years. And I just want to be able to share uh, this uh, experience with others so that they will know uh, because we know we have so many, so many problems in our society. And um, But I think that once people learn how to organize, how we can build from the bottom up uh, to show that people have power, that I think that, people, that working people have power, then they know that they can change things. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand that. Right now, I'm in Los Angeles. We're going door to door, uh, trying to get people to come out to vote, uh, trying to get a really good person elected, Hilda Solis, who's running for supervisor. Uh, but you know, even as we go through, we know a lot of people aren't registered. Uh, they were just checking the polls right now. Only three percent of the people had voted. Well, we still have four more hours to go, and we know that a lot of our people vote late. You know, but even. Uh, the, the highest they're expecting is 20% of the people to come out and vote in this primary election. And when we see that, that makes me so sad because, again, people understand or don't understand that part of the power that we have is the voting power, all right? And we have to somehow, you know, really organize people to understand that 
And I just want to say to the people that are listening in on our chat here to, today, if you know anybody in Los Angeles uh, or if you're from Los Angeles, please send out a tweet or a Facebook or an email to your friends and tell them, please, you have till 8 o'clock this evening to vote. Uh, we want to get this great woman, Hilda Solis, elected as, as the supervisor here uh, in Los Angeles. And she was in the Department of Labor, and she was in the State Assembly, she was in the State Senate, she was a congresswoman. So there's nobody that has that kind of background and qualifications like she has. So anyway, folks out there, please, you know, call your friends, call your neighbors, uh, even your people you don't like, just call your enemies, okay? <laughs> and tell them to and vote today, okay? It's, it's an important day. And especially if, if the, the politicians do not see uh, these uh, Latino surnames, uh, if they don't see those surnames on, on the list of voters, then hey, if it's like if we don't vote, you don't matter, you don't count, you know, so we really got to get people to vote. Well, you heard it, folks. Get out there and invite your friends, invite your family, and get out and vote for Hilda Solis. Say hello to Hilda, Dolores. I will do that. Yeah, I told her I was going to be speaking with you. Uh -huh. Tell her we, we are rooting for her tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about you've been organizing and, and empowering people to, to get engaged civically for decades now. So let, let's talk a little bit about the, the labor movement. What was it like to be a woman in the labor movement, knowing the way that our, our society, our culture works for women, uh, and you being such a prominent figure? What, what was it like for you? Well, it's interesting because um, when uh, way back when I was the vice president of the United Farm Workers, when Cecil and I started the union, uh, it was interesting because there were only myself and one other woman who had any high offices in the labor movement. You know, well, that was back in the in the '60s and '70s, but now we know we have a lot of women that have offices in the labor movement. And there's actually uh, the president of the uh, Food and Commercial Workers Union from California, uh, Connie Labor. You know, they've been fighting against Walmart. She's running also for the Senate here in uh, Los yeah. Angeles, Connie Leva. So that that's really good to know because hopefully she'll get elected. We'll have another strong woman. But it was it was not uh, that easy. All I have to say for myself that the workers always always supported me. And but I think the reason was for that is because I was the initial organizer. I was a negotiator, and that's why the the workers always looked up to me. You know. Mm -hmm. And always supported me in everything that I did. So I, I was very fortunate. And I think maybe my case is just a little uh, unusual. But uh, sometimes I had more more problems with my co-workers uh, than I did with the farm workers themselves. You know, the other leadership uh, were the ones that sometimes would give me a, a hard time and a hassle. Oh my God! <laughs> so uh, so um, knowing knowing um, that uh, you you are the one female Mexican American leader who is truly like a national icon uh, because you're, you are well known beyond the Latino sphere uh, and, and you stand out in a way that nobody else does really. So, um, but even so, when we talk about Latino history, it tends to be, everything tends to be narrated from a very male perspective, mm -hmm. right? Um, do you feel that um, that you have been sidelined, or you know, knowing that the way that, that women's stories are usually like relegated to the secondary place, they're, they're not, you know, front and center. Um, do you feel that way? Do you feel that it's been that that way for you? Well, they call it his history, right? Mm -hmm. His story. <laughs> we exactly. still haven't got to change that word to say her story needs to be included also. Well, you know. Uh, in some ways, what you say is true, but then in other ways, I get a lot of recognition uh, also on the backs of a lot of other people that did a lot of work, you know, people whose names we don't know, uh, but farm workers and other people who went out there and sacrificed their lives and, and were beaten, were jailed, and, and you know, and yet I, I really have to say that I get a lot of recognition uh, for the work of the Farm Workers Union and even for the work of our current people that we do, our vecinos that we organize in our communities. I get a lot of the credit, but you know they do all of the work. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, in some ways, you might say um, that yep, yes, we need to make sure that we tell the story of our women. Uh, you know, we have to start emphasizing that. But at the same time, I have to say for myself, I think I've gotten a lot of recognitions, including, as you know, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, uh, the California Hall of Fame, etc., etc., etc. I have gotten many, many, many recognitions. That it comes at the backs of all of the people who were to the movement. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
know, I, I'm the fortunate one that receives these recognitions, and of course, people don't even know the names of so many of those people. Like I said, that gave so much of their lives for the movement. Mm -hmm. Well, well, now that you that you say that, how do you think we can move all of these women's stories? You know, the, the stories of all of these courageous women, like yourself. Um, how do we move this to the to the center from the margins? Uh, because you know, you you have been able to get recognition, but there's so many women who never get it. Um, how how do we change that? Well, you know, I guess my, my my stock answer that I always give for everything is to, I say, organize, right? And I think that we in the women's movement, uh, we need to do more basic organizing. I'm on the board of the Feminist Majority, and uh, I'm also on the board of Equality California, which also has a lot of, of women, uh, you know, who are part of the LGBT team uh, in that. But um, we, I think we've got to, because we see that there's so many attacks against women right now. Uh, we see what's happening in places like Texas, where they're taking away all of the clinics, uh, where women uh, cannot even go if they need a safe medical procedure, uh, like an abortion. Uh, you know, uh, there's a, as we go throughout the United States of America, we saw so many states now that have really closed down clinics where women could get a safe medical uh, procedure, an abortion, if they needed it. And, and so we see these constant attacks on women, and I think there is a really big push now uh, to try to keep women from taking any kind of power. You know, we see with Hillary Clinton, you know, they're already t trying to say all kinds of stupid uh, rumors about her. And some mm -hmm. people are believing them, you know, uh, because yeah. they're always trying to, to do the attack against her as she runs for the president. So women out there, we have to organize. We have to organize ourselves, and uh, we've got to come together. Uh, because if not, I mean, things are going to get worse before they get any better. It's, a, it's, a, it's really sad. Very, very important. Um, I'm gonna make a little parenthesis here and remind the people watching that you can you can send in your questions. Uh, we have Monica Ramirez, our friend. You can see her little picture there on the screen, and she's manning the chat room. So if you have any questions for Dolores, please send them in, and Monica will make sure that I pay attention to it when you send it. Um, we're gonna take a question from the audience right now. Um, to, um, this is a question that was sent via Twitter from Adriana Maestas. Adriana says, uh, Dolores, what is your opinion about the general direction of the United farm, farm workers after you left? Well, uh, we know that the union had a hard time for many years because we had 16 years of Republican governors. Uh, the union, even when I was there, we won many elections. I'll give you an example. I organized an election in 1988, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and the union is, and the employer refused to negotiate even though we won the election. And uh, this is 1988. Well, that company has been ordered to bargain with the United Farm Workers in the year 2014. <laughs> oh my God. How many years is that? This is almost 20 years, right? And, uh, and even now they're still refusing to bargain. Uh, the unions having to take them to court uh, to make them bargain because they're refusing to bargain, and that, and we could, that that pattern is repeated with so many so many companies, and so I think that the union is 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 fighting hard to be able to you know fight for for farm workers, um, and uh, that's one good example. That company, the name of the company is Garawan, three thousand workers. At the same time, they have been able to get contracts for other farm workers. Uh, Governor Jerry Brown signed uh, this law that the farm workers are going to, to use to get this contract. And this law that the governor signed says if the union wants an election and the employer refuses to bargain, they can take them to court. And the judge can order them to negotiate with the union and order them to bargain. So I think that there's some hope there for the farm workers union uh, to try to make up, you know, for the years of Republican governors uh, where, the, where the union was not able to make any progress. Wow. A long history there, huh? Uh, yes, a lot of and, and you've been there all along. And I, I, I want to make um, a little note here because uh, there, there are so many um, comments back and forth about this, and, and people speculate a lot. But let's let's break a myth right here. Did you or did you not coin the phrase "si se puede"? <laughs> Thank you for asking. Yes, I did. <laughs> Coined the word "si se puede," okay, and it came out of a, it came out of a fast uh, in, in uh, since it was fast in Arizona in 1972, and when we were trying to organize uh, some of the professional Latinos to come and join us in our masses and 
that in our, our meetings that we have every single night, uh, a, a group of them, you know, that I met with them, and they told me, no, Dolores, you can do all of that stuff in California, but in Arizona, no se puede. And now that we say that, I want to tell you something really funny that just happened. I just got an email uh, about a couple of hours ago. In Arizona, there's a, a young man named Ruben Gallegos who's running for Congress. I think people, people here uh, in the chat might know him. He was a former uh, assemblyman in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, guess what happened? This Republican guy who is Anglo, right-wing Republican, just filed against Ruben Gallegos, and he changed his name, and he changed his party to Democrat, and get the name that he changed his name to is Cesar Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> I I saw that I saw I, I saw it on Twitter and we were all like, is he for real? You know, it's not really it's happening. Not, I mean, this guy thinks that he can he can uh, take away both by Ruben Gallegos by. And then the other thing I heard is that he's been passing around on his flyers uh, pictures of big rallies and the rallies are all uh, from Venezuela. Oh my God! From the other Chavez. What do you think of? What do you think of things like that? I mean, I think it personally, and it's que conste. This is my opinion. Um, I I think it's it's an insult to our intelligence. What what do you think, Dolores, or things like that? Uh, I think it's I think it's a, a well, it's kind of in a way, it's a, like I say, it's a it's fraudulent, like that saying in Spanish, que le quieren dar gato por liebre. You know what I mean? They want yeah, to give yeah. a, a cat instead of a rabbit. Oh my god. <laughs> and, uh, but to think that they would go to those lengths, uh, the Republicans would go to those lengths, you know, uh, to to uh, to try to win an, an election, you know. But uh, you know, we want people out there to support uh, the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Uh, we do a lot, a lot of work. You know, we uh, you know we organize the people in their communities, and they do wonderful things. They bring in streets and sidewalks and gutters and swimming pools, neighborhood parks, street lights. Okay, that's what they do. The people organize, and then they pass out. They go to the city council, to the board of supervisors, and then, you know to to fight for this money for the community. You know we have one committee that actually passed a bond issue, and they built a gymnasium at their middle school, and that's why. And then we hired this one young man who was so uh, such a great organizer. We hired him at James Timoteo Prado, and then now his wife is on the school board, and wow. and that's the great thing that the people that we organize, uh, twelve of them are now on different uh, boards. You know. Water boards, recreation boards, uh, school boards. We have people on four different school boards, and uh, one of our youth group got elected to the city council, and wow. he was only 19 years old. City council of Arvin, and so this is about giving people power uh, so that they can then, uh, you know, make the changes in their community that they need to make. And this is what our foundation is all about. It's about organizing and giving people power. Uh, we did a lot of work on Obamacare, going, getting people to go door to door uh, so that they could. Uh, you know, sign up for the uh, for the medic uh, for Obamacare. Uh, we've been, uh, uh, you know, we, this last uh, three weeks we've been again going door to door and uh, reminding people to vote, right? And uh, mm -hmm. we're a nonpartisan organization, 501c3, so we just tell people to vote. We don't tell them who to vote for. I'm here today working with Elvis Solis because I don't take any money from my foundation. I'm the president of the foundation. I don't take any money from the foundation, so that that frees me up so that I can do the political work. Uh, recently. Uh, we have a big fight with the school board, uh, and our our school board suspended between 2000. This is the Kern High School District. Between 2009 2011, suspended or expelled 3,000 kids. Wow. Needless wow. to say, most of them are Latino and African American. So yes, last night uh, we had a big uh, meeting at the school board uh, where our executive director Camila Chavez. Uh, uh, Juanita was there with, with her also, Juanita Chavez, and the head of our, our education director, Erica Brooks, our organizing director, Lucia Gonzalez, and we had the parents there, everybody was there, uh, and uh, because they were presenting their budget, Kern High School District's budget that they have, they want to put $2.8 million for police. Wow. And we're saying no, we want that money to go for counselors to train people in positive. Uh, uh, behaviors, you know, in the schools, PBISs for restorative justice, to do what other schools are doing instead of expelling kids, mm -hmm. train the teachers and get counselors for them. You know, you have maybe one counselor for 400 kids, you know, it's 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 ridiculous. And so we're kind of really, really engaged uh, in this big fight that we're having. But the way that we do it is that we organize the parents and then the parents are the ones that do the advocacy, you know. Yeah. 
that they get trained are able to fight for their children. And it's real work. It's work that is actually needed in the community because you've always been there and you know better than anyone, I think, what the communities really need around you. And so it's, you've been doing this kind of work for over 60 years, Dolores. How do you do it? This is a question that came repeatedly over social media. Everybody wants to know how Dolores Huerta does it at 84 and still going strong. Uh -huh. Well, uh, you know what we have to do? We don't have any choice, okay? If we don't do the work, who's going to do it? Nobody's going to do it for us. You know, we have to do it. Exactly, exactly. So um, there's another another question. I know you had to take a phone call, so I'm going to give you a little bit of recite. I the think it's a, question, it's a question coming to me through the phone. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so while Dolores is taking that important call that she's got, I'm going to um, read another question that came in from um, Fausto Lozada, at Fausto Lozada on Twitter. And he's asking, who do you think, who do oh, you see God. as the leader in the immigration civil rights movement? And we're going to give Dolores a little bit of um, time here so that she can. Uh, okay, I'm answer. good. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dolores. No. So um, the question was, who do you see as a leader in the immigration civil rights movement? And the question comes from at Fausto Lozada on Twitter. Uh, well, I think we have a lot of leaders out there. We have all the dreamers that were out there that did all of the work that they needed to do uh, to get immigration reform to pass. But I want to say, put this. I want to put this out to all of the people that are listening. I think it's time for us to start a postcard campaign, uh, so we can get maybe maybe hundreds of thousands of postcards into the Republican National Committee that say Republicans hate Latinos. Okay, mm -hmm. you know. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah really they, they hate Latinos and they hate immigrants, right? You know, you know. I, I think we should do that. Do you think that would be the the best approach to do it, Dolores? I don't know. I think we have to do something at this point because if we don't, we're never going to get immigration reform. Okay, so we've got to do it as 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 quick as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about that because it, it I think what you what you really um, want is for people to get engaged and to start going out to vote, right? What do you mm -hmm. think it would take to create a, an electoral revolution for Latinos? That's what we need. Yeah. Hey, Jan, I'm gonna have a Hilda say hello to you. Okay. Oh, that is so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Vida. How are you? How are you? Surprise guest. Thank you so much for coming and saying hello to us. Yeah, we're here at my campaign office in El Monte, California. And how are things going with the campaign? Well, we're we're hoping uh, that we have more of our voters come out. We have until eight o'clock tonight, and right now it's about four, almost four thirty, and we've been at it since four o'clock. Poor Dolores has been out there in uh, Boyle Heights at the Mariachi Plaza talking to press at 4.30 in the morning. Oh my God. So wow. mira, no más para decirte que aquí estamos listos. I think that we might have lost Dolores. Not sure what happened. Um, so let me let me hold on one second. You know what? How uh, live TV works. This is not necessarily TV, but um, but we are here, and we're going to continue the broadcast. A very nice surprise there, Hilda Solis coming in to say hello. Uh, and as soon as we can get Dolores back in we are going to continue with the Hangouts. Um, and I want to remind you all to continue sending in your questions via the chat uh, tool here, and uh, also through Twitter or Facebook. And whatever questions we cannot answer on the air, we're going to make sure that, um, that Dolores uh, gives me the answers so I can post them on my blog. So um, we're going to give her a couple of more minutes there to come back in. And um, 
that only means that the handout is going to get a little bit extended until she can come back. <laughs> um, in the meantime, you, you heard what she said. Um, um, we, we should all get together and, and really get out the vote. This is exactly what we need to be doing. Um, Dolores is back now. Hi. Sorry about that. Can you hear us? No, it's okay. Can Hilda come back in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilda's back here, and we want. Yeah, Hi, how are you? We want to remind Hi, you. Hilda. <laughs> Sorry about that. that. I don't know what happened. I know. Where are you? Where are you at right now? I am in New York City. I'm actually on assignment, and so I'm doing this remote as well. Good. Very Good. happy to have you. Yeah, we're delighted. Um, we just want to drive people to come out to vote because they're predicting low voter turnout in our communities. We've already seen some irregularities at the voting polling places. Some opened up late, two hours late. Some did not have the appropriate screeners to identify the ballots that were cast. And this typically happens, and it's unfortunate because this is a very important election for us primaries. And my race alone, if we get over 50 plus one, then we don't have to run again in November in the general. And so, and this district that I'm running in is 71% Latino. Wow. And the lady, the lady that I would replace uh, has been here for 23 years, oh, sure knows Gloria Molina, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll, we can do it tonight, pero todavía we have a couple hours, we have about maybe three and a half, four hours more, about four hours, three and a half hours more. But you heard Hilda, people get get out there and get go and support our our dear Hilda Solis. She has done so much for the community, and and you know that now she needs you. We need to make our voices felt out there. It's not just you know by tweeting and by talking on Facebook. We need to make it heard at the poll. That's where it's most important. You know uh, so what? This, mor this morning we were in a uh, 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 part of L.A. County that is. Uh, is uh, known yeah. as Huntington Park, and it's one of those communities where the average income is about less than 20000 And these are working class families, and the people that were actually organizing my campaign, and I call it an organic campaign, were young women 20 years old, 18 years old, high school students that were out there at 5 in the morning dropping literature at houses. Hasta, hasta quise yo llorar. Porque these kids are doing it from their heart. They're not kids. They're our future. And they know what's at stake because they want a good education. They want their parents to be treated fairly in the workplace. And they want immigration reform. And they want services, health care services, better education, and less pollution in their water. They were telling us about the polluted drinking water in their community. Wow. No, and, and, and who better you are from there? You are, that is your community. So you know all of the issues that are going on there. Uh, is, what, what do you think are the solutions, Hilda? What, what are you offering for people who vote for you? Well, I hope that they understand that we're going to fight to clean up the bad air, the bad water, make sure that there are appropriate education campaigns so people understand how to access county services, that nobody should be turned away, that we have a level playing field for those young families and moms that need to have health care, especially for their kids that are still uninsured that did not enroll uh, in the Obama Care Act or the Affordable Health Care Act, whatever you want to call it. And we still have to provide services to these people because we are the safety net. We are the last mandated safety net in the state of California. So we have an obligation. And we really have to make sure that our young people understand that in this country, it is a privilege to be able to vote. And now my parents came here as immigrants. I'm first generation. In many ways, they could not vote. That's why they fled their countries to come here, to have a better uh, societal uh, balance and structure for their children. And so we have to remind people from where we come why we fight, a fight for the good social issues and why we need new, new soldiers and people to take our place as well. Because Dolores and I have been at this for a long time. She's been at it longer than me. But who's going to replace us? We have to have good leaders and we have to start farming, have a farm team, you know, like a baseball team, you have mm -hmm. a farm team of young leaders, and they're out there. I know they are, because I've seen them. And the, the young people bring such a fire to everything that they do. Look at the dreamers and everything that they've been able to do. So we, I know that we, if we uh, have the message out there enough, and we, we inculcate that into our children, they're going to see it, but we have to do it by example, and that means that we have to get out there 
in actually vote when it's time, no? Um, so so um, going forward, Hilda, what is next after tonight? What is after um, after, after tonight when you win because you will then win? We, then we continue to prepare because I wouldn't take office, you know, technically speaking, until uh, December. That's when you get sworn in, so I have to prepare for that. Meanwhile, I'm teaching, I'm lecturing at Cal Poly Pomona University in my alma mater in political oh. science. So I love talking to the young students because they're so anxious to hear, how did you become the Secretary of Labor? How did you get involved in politics? Why are you so dedicated? Why do you care? And people, the young people understand that it's possible for them to also be able to do this. So I'm inspired. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to enjoy um, this evening, I hope, with the people I care about the most. That means my family, my friends, strong supporters, and our community. And that's really what tonight's going to be about. And then moving forward, it's going to be helping to shape other people that can help to influence public policy. Because you have to have three votes on this five-member board. So Hill does one of maybe five, of four, and we have to get three votes. So we have to convince progressives that hopefully will be on that, on that uh, dais to agree with us on expanding affordable health care, making sure that our young people aren't just incarcerated, that we really give them the tools to get educated and get skill sets and get assistance if they need help for, help for substance abuse, mental illness, lo que sea. And we need to let our women, our young women understand that there's a place for them everywhere and they should see themselves. Just like I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, people need to see in the mirror that they can see themselves there in these positions. Oh my God, and, and what better inspiration than two Latina icons. I, I don't know if you know this. Uh, you, you two are two of our big stars in the Latina universe. You know, we, we look up to you. You have been fighting for our rights for so long and, and really making things happen for the community. And so, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can save these moments for, you know, I'm, I'm looking at you like this, like I'm praying you uh, in my memory because this is such a beautiful thing and I, I am so grateful that that you are here, Hilda, that you that you came with Dolores and, and that Dolores accepted to be in the hangout with me too. So now that I have you before, I know that Hilda, you probably have to leave soon because I know you're in the middle mm -hmm. of the campaign. Yes, you cannot leave without giving me, what would you say to all of these women watching the hangout right now? Que si se puede, and here's a living example right in front of you that if we can do it from the backgrounds that we came from and there's nothing, nothing that can, that can stop you. It's, it's your own free will, it's your self-determination, and all you have to do is look in the mirror and see that image and feel good about it and understand that things are achievable. Goals are achievable. Sometimes they take time, but it's worth the sacrifice. And there are many, many people out there that want to help Latinas get ahead. Believe me, they want to help us. They want to see us succeed. So we don't have anything to be afraid of. No, and, and you know, by, by looking at you and your history, Hilda, look, look where you are. You are now you know, about to become the, the, the you know, one of, of our main figures in, in California. I, you know, I think you provide that inspiration for us to, to really, you know, if, if we haven't thought about it, now we know that it's possible to run for office, for higher office, and to become, you know, one, somebody, if not like you, because you two are unique, but somebody very close to, what you what you do and help our community. So thank you, thank you very much. I I think um, you know there there's um, a call to action that we have been talking. Thank you, thank you, Hilda. If you have to, okay, gracias. Okay. I'll oh, see sorry. you. Muchas gracias. So, so yeah, let's, let's remind people to send out their twitters. Okay, send out their twitters. Yeah, they live in LA. Hilda district is huge. It's two million people. So they probably live in her district. And I remind them to vote. They have three and a half hours to vote. And get on their Twitter, their email, or their Facebook, and just say to everybody, if you live in Hill District in the second supervisorial district, uh, or is it the first? Oh, my goodness. I have to look see. <laughs> anyway, uh, you have to tell them to go out there and to vote right away for Hilda Solis, okay, because uh, we're hoping she gets 50% of the vote. And uh, she, re she represents most of East Los Angeles. 
uh, all the way down to the San Gabriel Valley, all, almost all the way to Claremont, okay? So wow. it's a huge, huge district, almost near, near, almost near San Bernardino, actually. Uh, so it's a very, very big district. So, you know, we really want people to get out there and, and, and vote for her. So you, so you heard this, everyone, you know, send your tweets, call your family, call your friends, you know, get out there and, and vote yourselves if you are in the LA area. And, yeah. you know, and go and support Hilda because she, she has really done a lot for our community. So it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a good thing and you know she's going to be fighting for, for Latino rights in California. Exactly. So, uh, Dolores, going back to the conversation, um, we we were talking about um, before, you know, what what keeps you going after all these years? I think this is when we got disconnected at first. What is it that has kept you going all these years and built that fire inside you to continue, even at 84? Well, when we see all the victories that we've been able to achieve, you know, over the years, I, I mean, I get, I'm going to, well, we know we got amnesty back in 86. Although we know we're fighting for immigration reform now, but millions of people got the legalization back in '86. That was one of the uh, issues that I worked on very, uh, you know, for for the farm workers, especially for them to get their legalization status. Uh, you know, we got the ballots in Spanish language in California, and uh, and one of the one of the laws that we passed. I want to mention it because there's people that are listening that know people. But way back in 1961, even before the United Farm Workers, we passed a law that took away the requirement that you had to be a citizen to get public assistance. Before mm -hmm. that law passed, you could not get any kind of like old age assistance or any kind of assistance, food stamps, none of this, so unless you were a U.S. citizen. And we took it, we changed that law so that immigrants who are green card people could get these, this assistance. And you know what? There's millions of people now that qualified under Obamacare, okay? Had we not passed that law, they would never have qualified uh, for the Medical Affordable Care Act, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you see these victories, this is what keeps you going. Because you know that you so many millions and millions of people have been helped by the work that we're doing. And that's, I think, that what really keeps me going so I, I don't get tired. And, you know, we, we want to try to make more changes and involve more people and get more people turned on, give me more people to help us organize. And so I hope people come to our fundraiser because that's what we, we use the money for. We use the money to hire organizers, to train them, uh, to send them into these communities and uh, be able to make things happen. You know, so everybody out there, you know, we want you to come to our fundraiser in, in, in Washington, D.C. on June the 12th. It's going to be a, a wonderful fundraiser. And I think we lost Monica Ramirez. I think we yeah, lost her. I, I think we lost her. Um, well, she has a, a little baby, so I'm sure, you know, she went to take care of her well, baby. But I think we lost her. Well, we got we got signed off a minute ago. I think that's when we lost her, and she didn't come yeah, back yeah, in. Yeah. And, you know, but Monica and yourself are part of the committee that's putting the fundraiser together, along with Delia Garcia and uh, uh, Laura Esquivel and Eddie Morales. You know, so people out there, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Okay, so come prepared to have a really really good time at the fundraiser, and bring your friends. Yeah. Okay, bring your friends. <laughs> and the the idea is, you know, if you want to to help out and become a host too, or if you want to just, you know, support Dolores, she's been working for so long to help Latinos, you know. All you have to do is to go to that link that you see on the screen, is bit.ly uh, slash Dolores 84th B day, and that's where you're going to find all the information to become a host or to continue supporting the organization even after the party. So you can continue donating even after the party is over. But it would be a lot more fun if you came and joined us, right, Dolores? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cause we intend to have a really good time and we want everybody to join us. This other thing I want to just mention to people that some people may not know about, but there's a young group of uh, young people. It's called 99 Rise. Uh, they're formerly from the Occupy movement, and they're doing a march right now from Los Angeles all the way to Washington, D.C. And the reason that they're doing this march is because they want to uh, uh, bring attention to the, all of the money in politics and the corruption in politics. And so, you know, uh, they're going to be going to the Central Valley of California. And again, uh, get on the web. It's March for Democracy. And if people can help them as they go through uh, the towns of uh, Visalia, Tulare, uh, Fresno, all the way up to Sacramento, Merced, Madera, you know, uh, low dice Stockton. Uh, folks, uh, you know, come out there and help them because they need places to stay and they need people to help feed them. Uh, so we want to support them. And going back to this other idea, I wanted you, maybe you can put it out there to uh, your 
uh, listeners and ask them what, what would they think about uh, doing a postcard, postcard campaign uh, to the Republican National Committee that says Republicans hate uh, Latinos and immigrants. What do you think about that? I, I've tried that on a couple of people. We did a campaign like that back in the 80s uh, again, because one of the, against the Republicans because of the stuff that they were doing against the union. And, uh, and our postcard that we sent said Republicans hate farm workers, right? Mm. And they got they got they got their attention. So I'm thinking right now with the immigration bill being stuck the way that it's stuck, that maybe that we have to do something different. If not, we're not going to. We only have this year to pass the law, and so I think we've got to step it up and really uh, start doing something different. You know. And the window is really is very short between now and, and like the beginning of July to pass any kind of immigration. Um, so so you want what would you say is your your call to action now. I know that we don't have a lot of time left, so I want to make sure that I give you the time so that you tell me, you know, tell me about um, what would be your call to action. What would, what is the main thing that you want people to do right now? Right now, well, I'm I'm thinking of the, of this whole thing. I think with Twitter and Facebook that we can get maybe a lot a lot of people to start. I will get the name of the Republican National Committee. Uh, maybe somebody can Google it right now and call it call it into us right now and let us know what the name of that person is and start this campaign all over the United States of America and to say to the Repo like the Republican National Committee, uh, you know, uh, why do Republicans hate Latinos and farm workers? We know that the only reason we're not getting the immigration bill out of committee is because they're refusing uh, to let it out. You know, they've got it. Uh, HR 15 is in uh, the Judiciary Committee on the Congress side. This guy Goodlett, who's the congressman, is refusing to let it out for a vote. The Democrats have a discharge petition where they're gathering signatures, and they, if they got enough signatures, they could, could pull it out of committee. But by now, they haven't been able to pull it out of committee. So, you know, uh, we've got to do something drastic to make sure the bill passes this year. And most importantly, you know, I think that we also need to uh, get organized to get out and vote in November. Right. Absolutely. Well, that also, that also, but we got to do this thing. We know we have the votes on the floor of the House, and we would bring the bill uh, to a vote on the House uh, that, you know, it, it would pass. But they have to bring the bill to a vote on the floor of the House. Mm -hmm. What do you think of, of all of the efforts that are going on with immigration? Do you think that, that they are being effective, or do you think we, we need to step it up a little bit? Well, I think they are being effective, but I also think we have to step it up because we know that we're very close. There's been an awful lot of work done by an awful lot of people, and I think we just have to step it up, as you said. And we may have to go uh, to boycotts at some point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, some of these people are giving money to these Republicans uh, that we're, we're not responding to immigration reform. You know, then we may have to boycott some of these corporations because they live off of the Latino community. They get all of their, their consumption from the Latino community. They, get all of their work from the Latino community, okay? Uh, so I think it's enough time that we say, you, you've got to help us. Yeah. Let me give you an example. You know, I'm, I'm uh, on the Board of Equality of California, uh, and I am very supportive of our LGBTQ community. But when they passed that bill in Arizona, and it was going to discriminate against the LGBT community, that restaurants could refuse to serve them, all of the corporations jumped in. You know, yet all of the corporations jumped in there. Uh, to put pressure on Governor uh, Jan Brewer uh, not to sign that bill that passed the Arizona legislature, right? Was, mm -hmm. You know, what about us? You know, what if we chop liver or what? You know, <laughs> the large numbers of us, our population is so huge as Latinos. And as women, also, they keep passing all these bills against women, and you don't see any these corporations coming up to stand up for us. Well, I think it's time that we call them on it. You get our money, you know, from all, everything that we buy from you. Okay, now we want you to step up to the plate. Go to those. Those are, you guys. You guys are giving these corporations are giving the Republicans money, uh, and they're and they're refusing to pass immigration reform. What's up with that? We got to change that. Right. We we are just tired of being taken as a toy, right? Right. Exactly. Take it for granted. Playing with the community. So, yeah. um, Dolores, I I want to um I want to um give a little bit of details about the event again because we don't uh -huh. have a lot of time left. And so I'm, I want to, I want for people to go to the link that is on the screen, bit.ly slash Dolores 84th birthday, 84 B-Day, 
and uh, you, you get to that link and you're going to find all the information to support the Dolores Huerta Foundation, that, which they're, they're doing such an amazing job, at, not only at the local level in their community, but also at, at the national level, you know, by advocating for all of these different Latino um, issues, you know, like uh, women's rights and workers' rights and immigrants' rights. So it's, it's, um, it's such an amazing organization. And Dolores doesn't take, you know, money from just anyone. She she is counting on our help, you know, the people that who love her and who respect her to to support her. So let's let's give her uh, our support like she has always done to us. Uh, so Dolores, I'll give you a, a, the last couple of minutes to give me your your last words here and, and your last message. Yeah, I'm just uh, yes. Uh, again, we invite you to come and join us. Uh, number one, and we're on the web at www.dolorespuerta.org. Uh, it's easy, easy to find. Uh, Dolorespuerta.org. We're easy to find on on the web, you know. And uh, and then uh, the other thing too is we uh, again, uh, you know, and actually you'll get information there about the projects that we're doing, and we'll keep up to date on our projects. And of course, we'd like you to uh, you know come to our fundraiser. We like it. We also have merchandise that we sell online. We have some really, really neat stuff, especially for your cell phone, uh, to support uh, our LGBT community. So we want you to come on and see what we've got on our on our website. And I, can't, I want to remind everybody again uh, to uh, you know Twitter your friends, face, you know send your folks emails and Facebook and Twitters to say all of you in Los Angeles that live in Hilda's district, uh, please come out and vote her for her and. If uh, you want to come and help us, I mean, I don't live in Hilda's District. I live in Bakersfield, California. But she's such a great woman that I am spending a couple of days here to help her out. And we have a lot of young people here that are, that are uh, and, and older folks like myself, that are out here working for Hilda. And we're here at the Laborers Hall in El Monte, California. That's where we're at. And the Laborers, uh, laborers uh, number 300, that is uh, the, the, the number of the, of the union. And it's on Ramona Boulevard in El Monte, California. So if you can come and help us, we, we need your help. We gotta go out there and get our people to come out and vote. So si se puede. We hope that you can help us, okay? And, and keep in touch with us. And we love you, Ian. Uh, we love you, Monica. If you're if you're listening, and we hope to see you all in, in Washington pretty soon at our fundraiser. And si se puede. Si se puede, verdad? <laughs> Dolores, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me. Thank you for your words of wisdom. You know that they're very well taken and, and, and that we take heed on everything that you say because you, you're such a wise woman. And you have, we know that you do everything that you do from the heart with, with all of your heart. Uh, I want to also thank Hilda Solis for coming, taking time out of her campaign to come and say hello to us. She's always uh, such an amazing woman and such a, a great, uh, great friend. Uh, so I want to thank you both for being here. I want to thank everyone who's watching out there. Um, just as a reminder, you can see this whole Hangout again on YouTube. On my channel is uh, youtube.com slash user slash Elian Ramos. And um, thank you so much for watching. The Lotus you know how much I love you. So thank you for being here. Thank you also, Jan. Love you too. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Okay, see you soon. See you in Washington. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.